In this video, we're going to look at another property of quantum mechanical operators and their corresponding eigenfunctions, which is that these wave functions are orthogonal. So what does it mean for something to be orthogonal? What is orthogonality? Well, in this case, what we're looking at is the product of two functions. If we take the product of two functions and we integ integrate over all space, the evaluation of that integral should give us zero. Right, so in this case, we have two functions, psi i and psi j. We take their product, right, the complex conjugate of one of these guys, take their product and integrate over all space, we should get a value of zero. Now, this property is true for any quantum mechanical operator, and it's a direct consequence of the fact that they are Hermitian. And so we're going to, to look at that and evaluate that and prove that. So, uh, so what I want to do here, we have two different wave functions, psi i and psi j. They would each correspond to two different energy eigenvalues, e sub i and e sub j, right? So I wrote out both of their uh, Schrodinger equations here. Same Hamiltonian, right? So the same Hamiltonian describing the same system, but you can get two different energies by having two different wave function solutions, right? So psi i would yield an energy e sub i and psi j would yield an energy e sub j. And so what I'm gonna do here is for both of these equations, I'm gonna multiply by the other wave function. So for psi sub i, I'm gonna multiply this on both sides by psi sub j, the complex conjugate of psi sub j. And for the psi sub j equation, I'm gonna multiply through by the complex conjugate of psi sub i. All right, so, so starting that off here, right, I'm gonna multiply on this side by the complex conjugate of psi sub j and integrate over all space. So for this one, we'll have psi sub j star, h hat, still acting on psi sub i, integrating over all space. Now keep in mind the energy eigenvalue is just a real number, so we can just take that guy out of the integral and then we're integrating over psi sub j star times psi sub i overall space, right? So we have this for this equation. And then for the second one, the size of J equation, we'll have, right, coming through with the complex conjugate of size of I, Hamiltonian acting on size of J, DT, D tau, and then uh, factor out E sub J, and similar looking integral here, where we have uh, psi i star psi j. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is actually take the complex conjugate of both sides for this equation here, for the second one. I'm going to take the complex conjugate of both sides, right? So what we're going to do here is take complex conjugate here. right, of the whole thing. And same thing here. Now, since the energy eigenvalue is a real number, um, it's going to be just left alone, stays the same. But the functions inside our integrand change. So we got psi sub i, and now we got psi sub j star. Okay, because the Hamiltonian is Hermitian, Right, because the Hamiltonian is Hermitian, this integral, by definition, is going to be equal to this, right? The complex conjugate of this integral, right? These two are equal by definition because they are Hermitian operators. So that means that these energy expressions are also equal. So we're going to set those two equal to each other. So we're going to have E sub i, psi star j, psi i d tau, is going to be equal to this expression, e sub j, psi i, psi sub j star, d tau, right? So these two are equal. So what I'm gonna do is set them both on the same side of the equal sign, right? So we're gonna have e sub i, Psi j star, 
psi i d tau minus e sub j psi i psi j star d tau equals zero, right? Okay, so since we can, um, you know, we can move around these different functions in the integrand any way we want to, this will be the same integral as this one, right? So we can actually factor out this uh, e sub i minus e sub j. So we can have e sub i minus e sub j times the integral psi j star psi i d tau, right? Like I said, these integrals are exactly the same. We can shift those functions in the integrand. They're exactly the same. So we can just factor it out more or less. So basically we're factoring out e sub i minus e sub j. Okay, so we know that this, in, this expression has to be equal to zero. Up until this point, we have assumed that this is a Hermitian operator, which is a good assumption since it's a quantum mechanical operator, right? So we've used that to set these two equal. If they're equal, then when we subtract them, they should be equal to zero, right? This whole expression is equal to zero. Well, we have to evaluate each of these pieces to see why this is equal to zero. Because what we know is these two energies are different. E sub i and E sub j are products of different unique distinguishable wave functions that should give you different energies. So E sub i is not gonna be equal to E sub j. Because of that fact, this cannot be zero. This cannot be zero. If this is not zero, then that means that this term must be zero. It must be equal to zero. Right, so since this, uh, since these two energies are distinguishable, they're unique, they're not equal to each other, they cannot be zero. So this other term must be zero. And you could prove this for any, uh, any pair of mutually orthogonal functions, right? This is a direct consequence of this same Hermitian property. Since quantum mechanical operators are Hermitian, their wave functions are also, are going to be orthogonal. This is a direct product or direct consequence of this Hermitian property of operators. Okay, so that proves that this is gonna be equal to zero. That proves this orthogonality property. So um, I wanna uh, bring up a term that I'm gonna use uh, probably going forward in this course called orthonormal. Orthonormal, right? So this just refers to any set of wave functions that are orthogonal and normalized, right? So, um, so not only are they normalized, but they uh, constitute a mutually orthogonal set as well. So when you hear me use this term orthonormal, that means that it is a set of wave functions that are orthogonal and normalized, right? So we already talked about the normalization uh, property. So after you normalize a set of wave functions, they are orthonormal. Okay, cool. So this proves the uh, orthogonality property for wave functions. Again, direct consequence of the Hermitian property of the operators, uh, very foundational property of quantum mechanical wave functions.